Uh, hello, Pete. I'm really Hi, glad nice uh, you are here in the pub. Uh, we are meeting after what two years from Iron Fist, probably something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Was that two years ago? Christ. It's crazy how yeah. time flies by. It's uh, insane. We are here to talk about uh, Endpoint, and uh, you are CEO, CEO, COO of that company. What the hell yeah. does it mean? Uh, Chief Operations Officer. I mean, Endpoint's a bit different in some ways there's me and adam my business partner we basically just do everything 50 50 um mm -hmm. and i do more of the operation side of it in terms of the day-to-day -day running adam's more kind of like at, well at the moment he's fully focused on development projects actually uh, a bit different to, yeah. to esports but um but yeah we, we we kind of add jobs interchange and do whatever's needed really um mm. but overall viewing of the whole company is as a, as a whole but yeah uh, and point was found uh, 2016, if I'm right, yep. and you join it really quickly after. So you spent most of the time in that in that company. So essentially, um, I used to run a company called London Conspiracy, another esports org. Adam had just started Endpoint up, um, and we met at an event in Copenhagen, um, yeah. a Counter Strike event, and over a drink, as you do, uh, both of us had business partners that couldn't quite commit the same amount of time and money to it and mm. uh, we ended up just kind of merging as it were so um after about yeah six months of endpoint running um yeah. so yeah copenhagen games is amazing event i was there with uh, razor on several yep. occasions and uh, this is place where most of the counter strike uh, for that region is happening like if there is lan and i like how, how they, what they are doing but uh, so this is your this is your background basically. Uh, you came for, uh, into gaming from the Counter Strike, and it's yeah, also so one, used, yeah, one of used, your teams. Yeah. So well, personally, I used to play Counter Strike kind of like semi professionally um, when I was a kid, uh, hmm. long time ago, fifteen twenty years ago, um, in Counter Strike Source. Uh, big passion of mine growing up. I then actually got into playing poker for about twelve years professionally, um, hmm. and got back into esports when I got a new PC, and then. Um, kind of just got back into the industry and and started to do that because I esports is more my my passion, love it compared to poker was just more of a job at the end of the day. Um, yeah. Even though I enjoyed it as well, but um, and now I've just been doing esports full time for a while now. Yeah, but uh, so this is the this is the dream job for you. Yeah, Working yeah, sure. well, mo mo most days, <laughs> some days not not so, but yeah, no, yeah, it, it's great. Yeah, yeah my, it depends hobby, on. Sure. on it depends on the players. I have that uh, experience uh, in my life as well. Uh, when I was running uh, Necro Razors, which is a Czech organization, one of the oldest one. So I know that uh, sometimes it's uh, kind of uh, traveling to work with the people. <laughs> and uh, you have like uh, f uh, four teams, basically. You have uh, two in Rocket League, uh, one Counter-Strike and AVEC representing uh, Quake Champions. So this is why most of the people from the community know Endpoint. And uh, how does it start with AVEC? Can you tell me more uh, about it? We nearly actually picked him up earlier. We actually were very close. I think it was 2017 to picking him up. Uh, 2018, 17, major 18, I can't remember what it was, when 2v2 was one of the main games in Quake. Um, mm. We nearly picked up AVEC and Claws together as a 2v2 partner. Um, I think Claws ended up going to somebody else and then that kind of fell through a bit. And then when the QPL came back around, obviously we had already talked to Avec at, at length before that because of mm -hmm. nearly picking him up in TB2. Um, we decided just to pick him up at the start of the QPL. Um, and then, uh, and then, yeah, I mean, Avec's the easiest and nicest guy to get on with. And, um, you know, he's so easy to manage and he kind of manages himself in, in some ways. <laughs> um, and yeah, we've got quite a, good close relationship now and he's, he's great to work with and um yeah he just came to our new headquarters kind of recently for for, for a couple of weeks or a week i think it was during the qpl when which unfortunately yeah. he couldn't make um but you know it was good to get him here in person instead and just you know chat through a bunch of stuff and, and do some content and uh, chat about the future of what it looks like with endpoint and quake and and what we can do in it yeah mm. Uh, that content uh, Avec is creating is is this like from uh, his mind? Is it his idea, or you were, you are like uh, pushing uh, players in general to do some content as a part of the promotion for the partners and for the team? A bit of both, yeah. I mean, with Quake especially. Um, so if you just take Quake, Quake in a nutshell, it's it's tough to kind of 
monetize or do anything with that in terms of like the viewership's not great and and to be honest, your sponsors aren't that interested in Quake, unfortunately, anymore, um, which makes it tough. But if we can create, you know, unique unique content to help build our brand, build Avex brand, build uh, everything around that, great. Um, and the uni- unique thing about Quake compared to other games, I'd say, is on the budget that we can do. So let's say we take Counter Strike, we can't get the best players in the world on a podcast in Quake mm-hmm. Quite Counter Strike because it's just another level and yeah. um, and uh, whatever. But whether, whereas in Quake. For the, the diehard fan, the fans, we can get, we can have the best players in the world, more than willing to do media, more than willing, the nicest mm-hmm. guys, a bit older as well, so a bit more mature, and um, and we can create unbelievable content for the, for what it sounds like the fans want, because the community in Quake is so nice as well. If you look at like a good performing Counter Strike video or something, say, there's a lot of toxicity in there. Whereas Quake, everyone is so nice, um, mm-hmm. and and the community itself is just so positive. They're so um, wanting more. They love the fact you do content and. They're appreciative of it compared to some other games, so that's what I, we we really like Quake from that aspect. Um, talking talking about about uh, Quake, uh, you have seen what uh, Maestro did uh, in uh, London in uh, Sphere. Do you think that there is a chance that we will see something similar, maybe with uh, your participation? Yeah, I mean we're um, we're putting out a video out actually quite soon. I don't know when this one will be out, but. Um, mm-hmm with me and Avic just sitting down for 15, 20 minutes chatting about uh, the potential of an endpoint LAN. So mm-hmm. um, we now have this new facility, 4,500 square foot facility, which was launched four months ago. Um, we want to make more use of it, be able to do LANs and stuff. So uh, we are discussing the possibility of doing just kind of like an eight person kind of invitational, fun, smaller LAN. But I think um, some of the issues with LANs like not like Iron Fist was done amazingly, and I don't actually know how they managed to get such a high prize pool. That was fair play to them. Um, we won't be doing anything of that scale in terms of prize pool wise. It'd be more, you know, a thousand or whatever or uh, two, like smaller amounts. But um, like similar to KingCon, but the problems with those events where teams don't want to send their players because, right, if you take it from an esports organization's point of view, um, Big Clan, Liquid, Endpoint, or whatever, and then you put an event on in Spain. Um, for that, that small prize money with the viewership being quite small, it makes no sense for us to pay for flights, hotel, um, uh, you know, all that kind of stuff to send them to that event. So for us, the events we'll put on are going to be smaller, like eight person events. Everyone will get their own PC. We'll do like a match up in the media studio where you could have like 1v1 or 2v2 events that kind of fun, fun stuff. Um, but we're going to pay for flights and accommodation for every player that comes. Um, so the prize pool might be small, but they won't have to pay anything. So that, that's, it's a, that's actually really good. So, so, so for us, it's more around supporting the players. They come here, um, flights. There's actually surprising a lot of Quake pros that are in the UK. So that actually is quite helpful from a travel point mm-hmm. of view. Uh, we'll get some, maybe we get some people like Venga from Italy. You know, kills them from, from Germany. All these kind of like cool, cool yeah. things. If Rafa's in Europe, maybe we get Rafa over. Rafa, sh- but he... yeah, Rafa. Sorry, sorry uh, to interrupt. Uh, Rafa should be uh, staying in uh, Europe, basically. Exactly. That's what exactly. he told me. So. We, yeah, we, so you have like top players from the world uh, in the in the in that studio. Exactly. So ho- hopefully we can do it. So the organisations itself have to pay, pay a penny. The you know Rafa or Kilson or anything if they want to, if they want to come to our event they don't pay a penny either. Uh, and they and and yes they can't win too much prize money. It might be small. We actually if you watch the video we might talk a bit about potential crowdfunding as well if the community mm-hmm. wants to get behind it um, and and do it that kind of cool way. Um, and we'll make it if you've ever, if you ever watched the kind of like Beyond the Summit style events where it's chilled on a car like couch casting, fun vibe where you know the players can come on the couch and chat to the casters at the same time and have it really like fun chilled we've even discussed the idea of doing like an after party in the facilities and and, pe- and the twitch chat can watch us watch the after party while we're all drinking and stuff and having fun um yeah. some fun fun ideas like that um and and kind of making it six or seven players maybe invitational and then maybe have one or two open spots which people can qualify for um but as a test event and see how it goes we actually have apartments down the road from here as well so if they're free mm-hmm. we can use those um so that the actual event itself won't cost us too much to put on we're already paying all the costs for the accommodation. We're already paying the cost for the rent for this place, you know. And if it's successful, viewership's decent. Maybe we do get a couple of brands who are interested. We could do it four or five times a year. Why not? Um, and and around the QPL when in the off seasons, if QPL is on next year, again we mm. haven't heard anything. But um, like, yeah. usual stuff. We don't know. <laughs> of course. Uh, yeah. 
You are talking about the headquarters in Sheffield. Uh, like first mention uh, that uh, Sheffield should be a center point of uh, endpoint <laughs> uh, is uh, like uh, 2020 when Adam was talking about it uh, in one of his interviews. So you finally managed to do it. And I'm blown away, to be honest, because you put it together in situation where COVID was the thing. So everything was basically on the lockdown. Then the prices of everything uh, basically doubled. I don't know how it is uh, in UK, but in Czech, like uh, if I want to renew my house, everything will be like double the prices and you pull it over. This is crazy. Uh, can you tell me more about that uh, whole idea or did you have that places before or it was just renovation or new new space? Sure. We actually had a lease ready to sign in 2019, end of 2019, start of 2020. Uh -huh. We had a lease that was like in front of us for a different place. Um, and I'm so happy we didn't quite sign it because then COVID hit and we were like, this would be a really stupid idea to go into it uh, right now. Um, mm -hmm. And if we had signed that, that could have been the end, end of endpoint because, you know, over for two years paying for rents everything that could that could have, so very lucky there um and you know after covid it was always our idea to go back into it it took us a long time to find the right place we actually uh, nearly signed for a different place then we found out right at the end after paying all the legal fees and everything that some leaks were being hidden from us that were worse than we necessarily thought they were and so on in the building until we found this place this place is like yeah, four and a half thousand square foot but it's a it's, it's a box it's our own own building it's completely um detached for anything else so the whole building is ours um mm -hmm. we have car parking spaces with it as well for events and so on um and we don't lose a single square foot some of the issues with some of the places we saw they were like some areas like triangles like this and you can't yeah, fit a boot okay. camera in that it's, it takes up room um and this place is like it's almost like just a box and you can fit you can you can customize it how you want it to so it came as like It came as well renovated as a shell, but we had to put all the walls up. We had to put all the internet in properly, the Cat6 cables to get. So we've now got two internet lines. One's a one gig line, one's a 10 gig line. Um, we've got, um, uh, but we've got, you know, four bootcamp rooms here. Um, and so, but for Quake, as it's a small event, we're going to do LAN events for Counter-Strike stuff as well. So end of the year, we'll do uh, four of the best teams in the UK. We'll each get their own individual room. We have the media studio, we'll do a full event, that's going to be in December. Um, but we're looking to do potentially Quake one earlier, maybe even start November or uh, end yeah. of October. And then, um, but it will just be, give them one room, put seven or eight PCs in it, each of them get their own own station, and we'll just, you know, shift the PC up into the into the, 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 the play area once it's their turn to play, come back down. And, and to be honest with you, going back to the event so i kind of want to just you know make it so they have a good time maybe we'll take one night out it's so ch so cheap in sheffield you can go to mm -hmm. some night go to nightclub if you want it's really cheap do drinks inside have it as a everyone has a great time and uh but you know yeah but, uh, facility yeah so it's kind of we've always done it we're a bootstrap company we haven't got loads of investment we're not like a, a liquid or a big who have had millions of investment every time we kind of make profit we just reinvest it so we kind of grew our profit up and we've reinvested it into this facility which cost us a lot more than we thought it was going to do uh, we actually were double budget um that's how bad it, as you were saying about prices yeah. going up we were double the budget we thought it was going to be so uh, we ended up financing some of it and so on and um but the yeah it just took a long time um you know even from planning We got the keys at the start of January, then we were building for three, four months. Internet was slowing us up as well, and we finally launched in, in May. Um, mm. So uh, we've got, you can look up the facility if you want. There's a website called prackrooms.gg where yeah. you can rent our rooms out. So that's another business model. Um, we're trying to make it diverse business model that we have where we have Endpoint, but we also have uh, a company called the UKIC, which is grassroots kind of hub for tournaments, which we could start mm -hmm. bringing into Quake. But, uh, and then we also have... Um, Yeah, Prakrams, and we have a development side as well. So, all helping each other grow. Yeah, uh, the uh, Prakrams is uh, another part I have like uh, noted here uh, because uh, it's not just that uh, Sheffield headquarters. You have also uh, through Sex, one of your partners. Uh, you have uh, two uh, facilities in London, one in Northern, one in Central. Uh, Are they uh, like gaming cafes? We we know like 20 years ago when uh, there was the internet wasn't a thing, but uh, or they are like more uh, focus on the on the whole team that is going there doing boot camps. More of a team boot camp place. So the thing that we wanted to do 
that others haven't done quite as well in the UK or gaming cafes is mm. if a team comes to stay, they need 24-7 access. Like, the amount of times where you come to a gaming cafe and it closes at midnight or, or 1am or 11 o'clock or whatever, it doesn't really work for esports. Um, mm -hmm. You know, people like gaming in the middle of the night. I think what teams here at the moment, they're staying until 5am sometimes. Um, and so all of our all of our facilities have 24-7 access. The uh, one in Watford, for example, is just an isolated unit by itself, which the team can rent out, uh, you know, key in themselves with the details we give them and stuff. And it's like Airbnb, check in and check out themselves on this kind of thing. Um, the one in uh, central London is with uh, CEX's main headquarters. They've got like, this really cool three-story uh, building in the center of London. Um, mm -hmm. And the basement of it is this cool gaming area where you've got... Um, bootcamp room but it's also got a pool table bar and and uh yeah. like and uh, so, Av so avic nosfar and max have actually all used both facilities so they stayed in central london with us for two three weeks um to boot camp last mm -hmm. time and uh they also went to the watford place i think as well previously so yeah. um yeah but they're, they're more aimed at teams uh to rent as a unit um yeah yeah. So the idea is that uh, if there is uh, some kind of uh, LAN events like ESL is holding uh, in the UK or maybe Insomnia, players from abroad can uh, travel earlier, probably practice over there. Exactly. Or so currently we've got, in Sheffield, currently we've got, um, there's Apex World Finals in Birmingham uh, this yeah. coming next week. So we've actually mm -hmm. got four Apex teams coming to stay with us here. And we've got one in Watford. We're actually fully booked this week, which is amazing. But um, Yeah, I, I saw yeah. to tweet like seven teams yeah. uh, hosted in those uh, facilities. Which so we've, is, only got six, we've only got six rooms. We've only got six rooms, but we've actually, because there was so much demand because of the Apex World Finals, we, um, we with our staff, we've kind of uh, moved, we've kind of split our staff area and we've given another room, <laughs> a customized mm -hmm. room. Um, yeah. Do you think to expand to, to Apex as well? Because uh, I kind of uh, have feeling that uh, a lot of uh, players, ex-Quake players, for example, as well, are interested in uh, Apex. Do you think that uh, it would be like viable team for you? Or is maybe. it like top secret, don't tell, uh, don't tell anybody? <laughs> no, maybe. I mean, esports, I mean, if you've seen anything about revenues in esports in the last year or two, uh, esports can be a complete money pit. Um, yeah. and it's about finding a, it's about finding the right games which have a viable business model. So Counter Strike, mm. we think, has a viable business model for us. Um, Rocket League has good. We have skins in the game, um, which is great. Cars that are flying around. Apex, we've heard bad things about EA's part of the program, and I don't think we'd even yeah. get into it even if we tried. Um, for us, uh, esports is great, and we're going to continue doing it. But um, and to be honest, that's one of the issues with Quake is, uh, yeah, um, the that it's not it's not supportive enough but um but it's also quite cheap because it's one player and we can do some cool things with it and, and so on yeah. um so it does add value but not maybe enough still but um so we're not really looking to expand any esports teams right now we're focusing more on growing the community hub site and tournament side of things from grassroots mm -hmm. uh, and also our other businesses like well practicum's actually now is just running itself but we've got a development project we're looking to invest in as well um mm -hmm. and um so less the esports side esports will just continue to do what it's doing and hopefully do well but um we probably won't get into other games right now uh, unless, unless a tournament organizer unless like a um a game publisher has a really good model which they want to get us involved with then we'll look at it of course um yeah but yeah uh you are talking about that uh, grassroots uh did you think about uh like uh connecting uh, community in Sheffield, for, for example, like uh, go, going into, let's say, schools and uh, doing doing something like in, in connection with uh, those institutions? Yeah, so we work with the local colleges and universities around, around Sheffield. Uh, we, we, we work with Sheffield Hallam University, Barnsley College, uh, Sheffield United have a uh, eSports B-Tech like, um, for 16 to 17 year olds as well. We chat to all of them. Um, we're offering like work experience for the people that are there. Um, and we're also uh, looking to do more, maybe some course enrichment in terms of like lectures for people wanting to get a job in eSports or um, you know, just a career path really and help, help with mm -hmm. that. So yeah, we work with the local ones for sure. That's cool. That's actually really cool that uh, this connection uh, is uh, happening in a way. Uh, in the UK, we have some long history of teams uh, that were successful. We will start with, uh, let's say, Four Kings, Fnatic, uh, what else? Dignitas. This doesn't exist anymore. Do you think that the uh, endpoint is uh, on the way to get the, like, to the top tier of, of those teams? 
because I know that you have some great uh, results in that uh, Rocket League that boys were doing really well last year. Do you think that uh, there is a chance to, let's say, have that uh, esports uh, like completely sustainable, that it will cover itself and um, earn money? It has been sustainable so far, but I'd say that's more from like a path to pro model of buying and selling players as well. Uh, we've done quite well mm. with, with Counter Strike. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's difficult. I, I don't see why we can't. In terms of domestically, we've done extremely well in Counter Strike. Mm -hmm. Um, we just haven't quite got to the major in Counter Strike where the skin money is, and that which is what we really need to aim for. Um, mm. Rocket League, yeah, has been hit and miss. We had a really good season two years ago, and we had a bad season this last year. Um, so, yeah, it's difficult. Um, yeah, I mean that's the main reason why Adam started Endpoint just before it was Dignitas sold to the 76ers, and there was no one else in the UK that was really doing it right mm. um, and professionally. So we tried to take that kind of like market and. Um, you know, represent UK talent on a global stage. I know Avex from Poland, but um, actually, actually fits us quite well with CEX as our main sponsor. I have stores in Poland as well, so it actually sticks, you know, fits quite well in that in that side of things. But um, yeah, uh, if this is like too too uh, personal, let me know. Uh, but uh, still, I have to ask how tough it is to get partners uh, from like sponsorship view. Extremely tough, especially right now. Um, we've in the last eight to nine months, we've lost three sponsors and gained one. Um, mm -hmm. And the one we've gained is more of just an affiliate thing, really. It's not like a proper month. So, like, yeah, it's um, it's extremely tough right now. Marketing budgets are just going out the window, even though they should be the ones that stay if you want to grow, keep growing your company, even through a recession. Um, but esports can be hard to justify like a proper ROI. It's not like if you go to Google Ads and you spend money and you can say, I got this return from it because you can see the, all the conversions and easy, it's easier to see. Esports is kind of like, um, we've given you this amazing brand, brand exposure from numbers here and there, but it can be hard to say this is exactly how much money they made back from it. Um, that can be the difficult part. So yeah, sponsorship is so hard, especially if you're a new brand and you're not as you're small, you're small you're not getting any financial sponsorships it's impossible uh, almost mm. impossible um mm. so yeah we're we're working on it but it's um it's tough so it's like uh that uh you are building the brand uh and building the community around it that you have like uh, loyal fans that are uh, cheering for endpoint uh, no matter what team uh, in general and you got some income from merchandise and other stuff is it like more, more Merch uh... merchandise is like super small percentage for us so sponsorships yeah. is like 50 60 percent of our revenue uh still yeah. um it's the biggest one for sure uh, we have player sales prize money which you get a small percentage of and then you have like um yeah a number of things really um digital items and rocket league and so on um we've got um sorry if you can hear noise in the background but um yeah we can um yeah, the number of things like that. I'd say merchandise is pretty small. Uh, this is why we're trying to build a, a kind of a business ecosystem where we don't have to be quite as reliant on sponsorships. So we now have revenue coming in from frac rooms. Uh, for the last four months, it's been really good actually start. Um, and we've, uh, we're have we looking to this development project we're doing to have revenue from there. And then Endpoint and the UKIC will be like, with these great communities, will be marketing vehicles for like Prac Rooms and our development project, um, mm. which are going to be kind of like, they'll be on our jerseys. So you'll already see Prac Rooms on our jerseys. We'll yeah. also have the other brand on our jersey in the next kind of like three, four months probably. Um, yeah. You know, if you believe that as an esports team, you can sell a sponsor, why don't you just be the sponsor yourself? Do you know what mm. I mean? Um, yeah. Because if you actually believe in your product, do it yourself. And then you get better margins because you don't have to, you know, go through the middle person. So we're trying to build our own companies around it as well. And then we can also use those as case studies to say, look, we've sponsored, we've advertised this and we've got these sales back from it. Um, and we can use that as case studies for other brands who want to get involved. But yeah. So so like whole the whole project around the endpoint, it's uh basically evolving day by day because uh, you find the prac rooms is working and you change uh, your policy or uh, your, your targeting accordingly to that so it's kind of uh, it's it sounds uh, in a way it sounds really like fun because uh, you have like different uh, priorities in your job each day basically am i right that's what's, or, 
that's why I prefer it to poker because poker was clicking buttons every day, the same kind of thing. Even though you're, it's quite swingy and you're money up and down, and you have to, you do have to look into the maths of it, and you do look into different yeah. opponents. But at the end of the day, it felt quite similar each day. Esports mm. is different every day, which is lovely. Yeah. Um, and it's just figuring out, you know, the best business routes to go down and what makes most sense. And as I said, we're a bootstrap company. We haven't got ten million. We can go spunk away in the in the um, on 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 fun things. Um, so we, yeah, we just have to make make sure it's all sense. So yeah, endpoints for businesses right now, all working together to grow. Um, we think they're potentially all profitable businesses, or at least the esports side might not be quite, but hopefully props up or holds value because it helps give um, give profits to the other businesses. But yeah, hmm. that's really cool. I'm like really blown away what you are doing, and I hope that everything will be working uh, really good for you. That endpoint will grow. And that hopefully we will be able to see each other on the event in Sheffield. <laughs> Because yeah, if there is something based, going sorry? on. Excuse me? Where about you based? Uh, I'm in Czech Republic, but uh, that's no yeah. problem. I, I oh, flew... Yeah, come over, come over for the event. Yeah, let's just do it. If, if, if it is like uh, open to, uh, let's say, press and uh, somebody that uh, won't be playing. I for sure will try to get there because like my, my last visit to London with uh, Iron Fist was amazing. I had uh, huge fun. QuakeCon is like chapter for uh, itself because it was crazy. And uh, I mean, I just hope that there will be more, more venues for the for the community and from a community, basically. I mean, based. we'll definitely need help with it, to be honest with you, because as well, like this is being honest about it you know we've, we we're massively into counter strike we know all about counter strike we've done events mm -hmm. for the last number of years uh, online we've never run a quake event um so there will be differences to counter strike so you know we'll, we will need advice we'll need help from the community we'll need all sorts but um but we don't do anything half assed so if we do it we want to make sure we do it right that's why we don't want to be a game and do it half assed we, that's why we want to be in quake and not just not tweet about it and not do videos about it and not do anything if you're in it be in it don't you know Don't do it half-assed. Yeah. So, um, yeah. but we've got lots of ideas going around our heads, um, and we'll see how it goes. And we'll try and put on one event uh, this year, and we'll see how it goes. Uh, we're in early days of discussing that still. Um, I'll have more meetings about it probably next week. But we also have um, an expo next week at Insomnia, um, so we're quite busy with that as well. And but yeah, um, Insomnia is it like is it all this plan in UK? Or do, 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 probably do, one of the yeah. I mean, I used to play. So we were currently in i i seventy one in some year seventy one. Yeah, seventy one. Uh, <laughs> and um, I used to play Counter Strike Source back in the i twenty ones, i twenty two, i twenty three. And actually, the funny thing is, so Adam, my business partner, used to go to the exact same events. Uh, I used to play Counter Strike. He used to play Call of Duty. And oh. Avic went to all the same events playing Quake, and uh, <laughs> we didn't know each other. We didn't know each other, but it was in a place called yeah. Newbury Racecourse, and we all were in different, different, like different seats, different events, uh, same event. Um, but we didn't know each other back then. But yeah, uh... <laughs> yeah. I never actually been to uh, LAN uh, rather than Iron Fist uh, in UK because, like yeah. back then, uh, it was. A, I think it was uh, I23 20 when Quake 3 was played a lot. Some TDMs were played as well. But uh, I mean, I was young. So insomnia, insomnia nowadays is more of like an exhibition where you have stands and people walk around. But then it also has 2,000 BYOC kind of like um, seats as well, where people play games throughout the weekend. Um, it used to be just you know more just, just like BYOC. BYOC, and now it's yeah. gone more creator and expos and all that kind of stuff as well. But yeah. Uh, so that would be the last question from me about esports. Uh, then I will give you the mic. Uh, You saw how uh, how esports is changing throughout the years. If like you are stick around from the CS source, it's like what ten years ago, before it was like uh, merged to Counter Strike Go. Uh, do you like where the esports is moving in general, or do you think that uh, there should be some more uh, involvement from community probably, or it Difficult depends one, yeah. on the provider? I mean, Counter Strike Source when I used to play it. It was more than 10 years ago. <laughs> it was probably like yeah. 15, 15, 16, 17 years ago. Um, but I would say um, that community back then kind of felt more like the Quake community is now in terms of like people aren't necessarily playing for money because you're playing for prize money and you're playing for maybe some really small salaries at the top and, and so on. Um, and everyone was playing because they loved the game. 
Um, and I feel like that's what Quake is about as well. People are playing because they love Quake and they play maybe they don't necessarily love this iteration of Quake, but but they do like Quake and, and especially the community is still playing Quake because they love Quake as a game title and, 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 and the whole kind of like um, system around it. But um, I would say so I say that kind of community feel is, is what I love. I guess some of the bigger titles now might have lost that a bit and it's more but more money focused. Um which can be tough, but that's you know if people want to get careers out of it, then you kind of need that as well. So if people want to work in esports, you need that. Um, you know, if you as a as a you know press person or, or anything wanted to have a full time you know job in esports, doing Quake or anything, Quake needs to be much bigger. <laughs> it's a <laughs> it's a difficult one. Um, and that's, this is my this is my hobby. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> After but my five months job. <laughs> but it's great you're doing it, and and look, if a new Quake iteration comes out. And it, it it goes really well with the like the younger generation now. You're there ready to blow up, um, and that's also why we're doing quite content in Quake. Let's say a new Quake comes out some, like next next month. Let's say it just happens ha happens to come out. They're quite secretive about it. You never know. Um, yeah. We could be ready to to put some good content out and actually do really well when there's massive hype around it. Uh, whereas if someone starts doing content when a new game comes out, they're behind already. Um, yeah. So yeah. And you also have like great connection. Uh, if I like uh, cut it down just to the quake, you have like a uh, great connection to the community thanks to uh, Mate because uh, yeah, he's, amazing he's well known. Yeah. And if you need any assistance from community, how to uh, do the LAN or the event, even if it is like invisible for eight players, I think that uh, those uh, resources are basically there. Just, just, you just, just have great feedback from uh, anybody, I think. Exactly. So we're actually going to, yeah. so we're going to put a video out on our so the Endpoint Quake channel um, on YouTube uh, fairly soon about me and Adam, me and, Ab, me and Avic just talking through mm -hmm. the potential of a Quake land and what we're going to do with it. So if you want to get involved with what your thoughts are on that event and how um, how you think it should be ran or any cool things we should do, or if you like the ideas that we've got already, mm -hmm. comment below and let us know because we're we're going to take community feedback on board as well and um, and see see how we do it. But yeah. Okay. Pete, thank you very much for your time. Uh, thank you for your honesty regarding the team and how Endpoint is working. I think that is uh, really interesting for uh, a lot of uh, mid-tier players to know how how challenging it is to like uh, run the team to get proper uh, how to say it proper uh, base for for your uh, like uh, esport experience. And if there is anything else you would like to say, microphone is yours. For my side, I'm really glad that we could have uh, this opportunity to talk and take care and hopefully see you soon in sheffield yeah cheers yeah thanks for cool uh, yeah maybe just a shout out to our sponsors in terms of like cex and over clockers and naval chairs and stuff and you know they've done you know and so shows they've done they've done great we could we couldn't do it without them um you know uh, at the end of the day if endpoint puts a so like a you know a sponsor post out it might look like it's an obvious ad and all this kind of stuff but at the same time that's what pays everyone's wages and that's what pays us to be able to do this content that's what um so just respect to the brands that sponsor any esports teams, or um, respect to them because it's um, it's great. It's what we what we need in the industry. So um, yeah, thank you. Very Thanks much. for having me.